Hi, I'm Sherry Ortiz. And I'm Vicki Romans. From Ask the Experts on DentalXrays.info. Uh, this session is going to describe what bisecting angle is and actually how to use it. Uh, many offices actually use the ring instruments, which helps with the bisecting angle because it's doing all the work for you. Um, what happens is, is when you reuse a ring and the film slants in the mouth, the bar is exactly telling you exactly what angle to use for that purpose. Using the rings eliminates the elongation, foreshortening, and overlapping. A lot of offices, offices do not use this ring. They use the actual bisecting angle technique. And what is that actually? I'll kind of explain it a little bit on this little diagram here. Ideally, what you want to get is the correct length of the tooth image on your film. And to do this, you have to use the correct vertical tube angle when you're projecting the x-ray at the tooth. Too much vertical tube angle, not enough, is going to cause the error of elongation and foreshortening. So how do you eliminate this? Basically what bisecting angle is, and where that term angle bisecting comes from, is determined by the placement of the film in the mouth and the long axis of the tooth. So if you look at the two of them, you are forming an angle. Now, because of this angle here, what you want to do is actually bring your vertical tube or your cone, your x-ray beam up enough so that as it travels out, it's going to cross what we call the bisected line. And what is the bisected line? Well, actually what it's doing is actually bisecting this angle. You draw an imaginary line between the film, the long axis of the tooth, and here's that imaginary line. And ideally, when you place it in the mouth, and if everything's in position like this, you start bringing your vertical tube up. So as the beam travels out of the cone, it's going to cross the bisected line at a perpendicular or right angle. And by doing so, that causes the image of the tooth to be exactly the right size on your film itself. It's when you don't have the correct angle, you're too high or too low, that your image is going to be too short. Like as you raise this up higher and higher, if it was projected down in this position, what happens is the root tip gets projected down here and that causes a real short little image. If you don't have enough angle, see this arrow here is where you should be. Let's say you're coming in like this and don't increase it enough, what happens is, is the x-rays travel on a straight line. This root tip is projected on your film way up here and that gives you your elongated image. So ideally what you need to do is set the vertical tube angle yourself to project the correct length of the tooth. Some offices have sensors only and I'm going to show you how to use the sensor and bisecting angle. Uh, it's pretty much similar to the um, other film or PSP plates, but sometimes you run into a few other problems with it. Um, first of all, when you place it in the mouth, it is bigger and bulkier, and a lot of times when it is in the mouth, I'm going to turn it this way so you can see, the sensor itself is going to hit the roof of the mouth and pull out like so, which is going to distort your image and, you're going, and it even comes out of the, the piece once in a while. So what you want to do then is when you place it in the mouth, tip it slightly so that the patient can actually reach the bite block easy, more easily and that won't occur. By pulling like this, you're going to have a distorted image by losing the root tips or the bottom edge of the teeth also because of this. So better with the bicycle angle is to turn everything and increase your tube angle because of that than try to have them bite hard and do this. So let's just put this in and show how much easy this is too with this, this holder. Again, we'll do the upper premolars. So I'm going to slant it like so, pull the, retract the cheek out, slide it in and have them gently close. Okay, when I say gently, I, until her teeth are actually on the, uh, the apparatus itself. So it's perfect like that. Adjust ahead so that the occlusal per, uh, plane is horizontal to the floor and then you'll take your x-ray tube 
and if you can actually see the angle of the film or a sensor in the mouth, that will, again, you're going to bring this up to determine the angle of the sensor, the long axis of the tooth, and about halfway is where you're going to guide your x-ray beam to be perpendicular to this. Kind of a, a close guide to this is if you can see your sensor and the position of that in the mouth, if you just about uh, bring your cone up to meet at a right angle to the film and maybe bring it back a couple degrees, then you will be actually crossing that bisector line. So this will work out great like this. Bottom edge covering the sensor, side of it covering the front edge, and there's this, which is nice on these uh, particular pieces here, there's this little purple line, you can see that? That's indicating where the front edge of your sensor is in the mouth. So if you actually take this cone and bring it right to the, this line, this purple line, you won't be missing the front edge of the sensor. The other part of bisecting angle is your bite wings. And if you use a bite tab, again, you're going to place the film to include the premolar, which is right here. So you want to make sure your film is far enough, in the, far enough forward in the mouth, right behind those front teeth, so that you're including this, um, this space between the canine and that first premolar. If you can't get it forward enough, if it's sitting way back here and this tooth isn't in front of the film itself, you're going to have to wedge it slightly to the side and then have the patient close and away from the teeth. Now again, for bisecting angle, you don't want them sitting with a clusal surface like this, so just bring the chin down and now you're only working with, with the angles that you need with the tube. When you're coming in from the side with your tube, what you want to do is make sure that the x-ray beam hits the buccal surface of those premolars at a right angle. And to determine that, you should have looked at the shape of the arch. Was it like this or like this? Well, if you forgot to do that, you can actually have the patient kind of grin, and you can look where these teeth are. So what I do is, in this, I look at the two premolars right here, and I'm going to bring my, my horizontal beam, the way it hits the teeth on the horizon, and I'm gonna swing it around, stand right behind it, until I know the x-ray beam is coming out and hitting at a right angle to those teeth. So this would be correct on her. Make sure that the front edge of the cone is forward enough to include the front edge of the, the film placement. So you don't want to be like this. Most mistakes that people make is they put it in, they have the patient close, and they just kind of guess the which way they think that that horizontal beam is going to be. And by doing so, causes one crown to overlap the other. So you really have to swing this, and it is determined by the shape of each individual patient. Open. Hopefully these techniques will help you around your office. Uh, the bisecting angle is a little bit more difficult, but with practice, uh, you should do just fine with it. Uh, understanding now that the vertical tube angle will cause your elongation for shortening errors, the horizontal angulation will do your overlapping. And if you can work with that, you shouldn't have any problem with any type of mouth. But if you have any other questions, please visit us at dentalxrays.info and click on Ask the Experts.